Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Jurassic World video. In today's video, we're discussing two universes in the entirety of the Jurassic multiverse. The cinematic universe and the novelization universe. Arguably the two most important and major universes for this franchise. We are all aware of some deleted scenes from the novel that sadly never made their way into the movies. But that hasn't stopped the potential of these scenes being repurposed in future movies instead. For today's video we're going to be discussing one of the scariest and goriest scenes from the entire novel that we sadly may never get to see appear in future Jurassic movies. To me, it's one of my favourite scenes involving one of my favourite dinosaurs, so if you're excited, be sure to sit back, relax and enjoy the video as it's time to discuss this Dilophosaurus scene that was too scary to be added in the Jurassic World movies. The Dilophosaurus has been a prominent creature not just through the cinematic universe, but also the novel universe as well. Its debut appearance in both of these medias were during the first Jurassic Park releases. It's arguably one of the most important dinosaurs of this franchise as well. Dilophosaurus played a pivotal role in the Jurassic cinematic universe by being one of the first dinosaur species to appear on screen in the original Jurassic Park film. The iconic scene where it spits venom and kills Dennis Nedry became a defining moment in the movie that has since become one of the most memorable scenes in cinema history. The introduction of the Dilophosaurus also marked a turning point for the film, as it was the first time that the characters and audience realised the true danger of the park's genetically engineered creatures. Before this point, the dinosaurs had been portrayed as magnificent creatures that captured the imagination of characters and viewers alike. However, the introduction of the Dilophosaurus demonstrated that dinosaurs were not just awe-inspiring, but also capable of causing harm and even death. Furthermore, Dilophosaurus became an important symbol of the park's failure to control and contain the dinosaurs. In this film universe, the park scientists realised that Dilophosaurus could actually spit venom. And while they actually thought that this could be a good defence mechanism for the dinosaur, they didn't plan that it could backfire and result in the death of one of their park's employees. Well, former employees. But how did this Dilophosaurus scene play out in the books? Well, that my friends, is a whole different story. I mean sure, the death of Dennis Nedry in the movie was quite the gruesome one, but it was also one that was laid out and set up for your own imagination to think of after the camera pans away from the jeep. The books, on the other hand, oh boy, they… they were something special. Something more in depth. Something in more detail. Something both gory yet awesome at the same time. Thanks to some incredible people online, we've been given an awesome reading by William Roberts and some incredible illustration by Eatalot. We can now have a somewhat realistic idea of what this scene could have looked like if it were to have been posted into a movie for Jurassic Park. Now, this video has been out for nearly 6 years now and has gained over 1 million views, so I am sure that plenty of you who are watching this video right now have already seen it. However, a link to the full 10 minute version can be found in the description below should this whole scene pique your interest. He heard the soft hooting cry once more, and this time he paused. That hadn't really sounded like an owl, and it seemed to be close by, in the jungle, somewhere off to his right. As he listened, he heard a crashing sound in the underbrush, then silence. He waited, and heard it again. It sounded distinctly like something big, moving slowly through the jungle toward him. Something big. Something near. A big dinosaur. Get out of here. Nedry began to run. He made a lot of noise as he ran, but even so, he could hear the animal crashing through the foliage and hooting. It was coming closer. Stumbling over tree roots in the darkness, clawing his way past dripping branches, he saw the jeep ahead, and the lights shining around the vertical wall of the barrier made him feel better. In a moment, he'd be in the car, and then he'd get the hell out of here. He scrambled around the barrier, and then he froze. The animal was already there. But it wasn't close. The dinosaur stood 40 feet away at the edge of the illumination from the headlamps. Nedry hadn't taken the tour, so he hadn't seen the different types of dinosaurs, but this one was strange looking. The ten foot tall body was yellow with black spots, and along the head ran a pair of red, V-shaped crests. The dinosaur didn't move, 
but again gave its soft hooting cry. Nedry waited to see if it would attack. It didn't. Perhaps the headlights from the jeep frightened it, forcing it to keep its distance like a fire. The dinosaur stared at him, and then snapped its head in a single swift motion. Nedry felt something smack wetly against his chest. He looked down and saw a dripping glob of foam on his rain-soaked shirt. He touched it curiously, not comprehending. It was spit. The dinosaur had spit on him. It was creepy, he thought. He looked back at the dinosaur and saw the head snap again, and immediately felt another wet smack against his neck, just above the shirt collar. He wiped it away with his hand. Jesus, it was disgusting. But the skin of his neck was already starting to tingle and burn, and his hand was tingling too. It was almost like he had been touched with acid. Nedry opened the car door, glancing back at the dinosaur to make sure it wasn't going to attack, and felt a sudden excruciating pain in his eyes, stabbing like spikes into the back of his skull, and he squeezed his eyes shut and gasped with the intensity of it, then threw up his hands to cover his eyes and felt the slippery foam trickling down both sides of his nose. Spit. The dinosaur had spit in his eyes. Even as he realized it, the pain overwhelmed him. And he dropped to his knees, disoriented, wheezing. He collapsed onto his side, his cheek pressed to the wet ground, his breath coming in thin whistles through the constant, ever-screaming pain that caused flashing spots of light to appear behind his tightly shut eyelids. The earth shook beneath him, and Nedry knew the dinosaur was moving. He could hear its soft, hooting cry. And despite the pain, he forced his eyes open, and still he saw nothing but flashing spots against black. Slowly, the realization came to him. He was blind. The hooting was louder as Nedry scrambled to his feet and staggered back against the side panel of the car as a wave of nausea and dizziness swept over him. The dinosaur was close now. He could feel it coming close. He was dimly aware of its snorting breath, but he couldn't see. He couldn't see anything. And his terror was extreme. He stretched out his hands, waving them wildly in the air to ward off the attack he knew was coming. And then there was a new, searing pain, like a fiery knife in his belly. And Nedry stumbled, reaching blindly down to touch the ragged edge of his shirt, and then a thick, slippery mass that was surprisingly warm. And with horror, he suddenly knew he was holding his own intestines in his hands. The dinosaur had torn him open. His guts had fallen out. Nedry fell to the ground and landed on something scaly and cold. It was the animal's foot. And then there was a new pain on both sides of his head. The pain grew worse. And as he was lifted to his feet, he knew the dinosaur had his head in its jaws. And the horror of that realization was followed by a final wish that it would all be ended soon. So, uh, yeah. It's safe to say that the movie version is much more toned down than the novel version. Which to me, I honestly don't mind at all to be honest. I mean sure, Jurassic does lack a little bit of gore and horror here and there in the movies, but the way that the movie scene was put together was really nicely done. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't want to see a similar scene to the novel in a recent production for Jurassic. With the universe confirmed to continue to expand, I would really hope that we see something like this in live action eventually down the line, and maybe even one of those big, fully grown Dilophosauruses. But that's a debate for another video. But seeing a larger Dilophosaurus would be a really nice addition to see in a horror sense. Now, from what I've heard internally at Universal, it seems like the Dilophosaurus scene from the book is deemed as too scary to be put into the movies. Not sure to what extent that this is true, however I would arguably say it's not much more scarier than to what we got in the original Jurassic Park movie. The only major differences here would be the obvious score, but obviously the large stature of the Dilophosaurus. But unfortunately, it seems ever so likely that seeing more gore being added into the Jurassic franchise might not be quite there yet. Severed arms and full body devourments are still prominent in this franchise, but seeing internal organs spill out and guts going everywhere, it's still a no-go for Jurassic. On one hand, that is a slight shame for the gore and horror fans, as it is something that could be utilised very well within this universe and or franchise, but I wouldn't set your expectations high for anything like this to happen soon, 
it just doesn't seem like the direction that they wish to take this franchise in. But for me at least, I'm okay with the occasional severed arm or hand, mixed with the entire body of somebody being eaten by a dinosaur, and maybe some more similar antics that they can throw in the movies. While Jurassic World Dominion was an incredible story and movie, one of my few major nitpicks about it was that it had next to no deaths. However, I can't say that the deaths that we did get weren't awesome, because they bloody were, if you pardon the pun. But the tale of the Dilophosauruses in Jurassic continue on. We've seen them in Jurassic Park, Camp Cretaceous, and now Jurassic World Dominion. And hopefully, one day we'll get to see them again in the future, but this time, maybe in a bigger format and with much more devious intent like to that of which we see in the book. But for now, before we get too excited, we just have to sit back and await any further announcements for the continuation of this universe. And when we do get any of that information, then you can be sure we'll be covering that news right away here on this YouTube channel. So if that interests you, please be sure to subscribe to the channel with the bell icon turned on so you don't miss an upload. If you enjoyed today's video, please go ahead and leave a like, and don't forget to also let me know your thoughts and opinions down below about this Dilophosaurus scene, and whether or not you would say it would be too scary for the Jurassic World trilogy. But most importantly, make sure you're all staying safe out there, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye. Hello, hi, you, did you enjoy the video? Just a little reminder to press that like button and also subscribe. I just want to thank my Patreons for this month on screen right here, as giving me that little extra support really does go a long way. But anyways, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day.